What up guys, Dragon Ball Bernie here. Alright, I'm trying to be as quiet as I can because my friend is asleep. Uh, Killer199 as you guys know him as. So I'm trying to be as quiet as I can. So anyway, I am reacting to Ghost Stories, an MLP fan read. Um, yeah, well the story was made by uh, Chain Reactions. And I'm not going to waste your time, so let's go. Warning. The following reading contains subject matter that some listeners might find disturbing. Listener discretion is advised. And check! Twilight spoke as she checked off the next item on her checklist. I'm so glad we decided to have a sleepover again, <laughs> darling. This night has been so much fun so far. Cooed Rarity as she walked over to the window. Although it was closed, the library's window pressed in slightly from the sheer force of the wind. It seemed like the storm was going to last for the whole night. Might a strong storm we're having, ain't it? I heard Clasdale's making this storm three times what they planned due to the lack of rain lately. Applejack spoke to Rarity as they peered out the window. The thick trees seemed to bend like straws from the sheer pressure of the wind. The occasional lightning strike would illuminate the dark background of Ponyville. How does it look out there, girls? Twilight asked as she approached them. Applejack and Rarity both displayed worried looks on their faces. Well, y'all can see that it's getting pretty bad. I hope Granny Big Mac and Apple Bloom are all right. The farm pony spoke softly. Applejack's frown slowly crept into a smile. Of course, I know that we've been through worse, but I'm sure the farm will be all right, Applejack goes. I hope, she thought to herself. Of course they will be, Applejack, and, well, I'm certain that Sweetie and my parents are fine as well, but I cannot say that I do not fret for them. Luckily, I know that my parents are smart and that they wouldn't let a silly storm get the best of them. Rarity assured herself and her friends with a sheepish smile. A bright flash came from outside the window. The sudden shaking of the treehouse frightened every pony in the room and caused them to jump. Girls, are you still there? Yelled Twilight as it became so dark that she couldn't see a hoof in front of her face. She then lit up the tip of her horn with an illumination spell, casting a pale light over her friends. Twilight, what on earth was that? Asked a shaking and terrified Rarity. Twilight slowly walked over to where the edge of the library table stood and levitated a lantern from underneath the cluttered books that lay underneath the table. The unicorn quickly flicked the switch on the lantern and brought it to life, illuminating four enchanted fireflies from within the lantern. I think a bolt of lightning hit the library and knocked out the power. Twilight spoke as she levitated the lantern to the middle of the room and sat it on the floor. Rarity and Applejack slowly made their way to the center of the library. Twilight sat down, flustered. Great. This is just what we needed. Now the sleepover's run! Yelled Twilight in frustration. Come on, Twa, don't be silly, Applejack told her comfortingly. We can still have fun. We can just gather around and tell stories so the Pegasi fix the power. Yes, and there's no reason to be upset, darling. It's just like I said earlier. There's no reason a silly storm should get the better of any of us. Rarity spoke. Twilight seemed to be down until her eyes widened as she had an epiphany. I know. We could tell scary stories like we did last. Since Spike is visiting Canterlot for a few days, he's not here to get too scared. So we can make them as scary as we want. Twilight happily. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm kind of tired. I'm filming at 5 o'clock in the morning. Are you serious? I am way up right now. Ah, well. All right. Three, two, one, continue. Exclaimed. Rarity and Applejack happily smiled. What a wonderful idea! Rarity exclaimed. She then looked over to Applejack. I assume your ghost story won't be about me, terrorizing every pony with my unnecessary neatness. Will it? Rarity asked the cow pony with a raised eyebrow. Applejack brought her hoof up to her mouth and snickered. <laughs> no, Rarity! This I remember that episode. It was funny. I like that. I like that episode. It was funny. It ain't about you this time, I promise. Applejack told her friends through chuckles. Rarity closed her eyes and flipped her mane with a hoof and gave a tiny <laughs> before. Man, leave a like for that episode. <laughs> leave a like for that episode. Like, comment, subscribe. You know.
Anyway, three, two, one, continue! Settling down on the floor by twilight in her emergency lantern, Applejack quickly followed. All right, girls, does any pony have any stories off the top of their mind? Twilight asked, Rarity's eyes narrow as she gave a sly smile. I do believe I have one, girl. Would you like to hear it? She asked. Twilight and Applejack folded their front hooves and got comfortable. I wouldn't mind, Twilight exclaimed. Applejack quirked her eyebrow. Go ahead, Rarity. Give it your best shot. Rarity brought her hoof up to her mouth and cleared her throat. The library was pitch black except for the pale light given off by the lantern. The girls could barely make out the soft light on the bookshelves, and the occasional roar of thunder could be heard throughout the empty and nearly pitch black room. <sighs> Rarity took a deep sigh before speaking. They say that about 40 years ago in Manhattan, there was a famous fashion designer named Faux Pas. She began. Applejack rolled her eyes. Are y'all kidding? I have a better one than some old fashion designer in Manhattan. A much better one. Applejack spoke. Rarity furrowed her eyebrow. Do you mind? I'm trying to tell a story and it is very rude to interrupt somebody when they're speaking. The element of honesty looking shocked that her friend snapped at her. Fine. Gosh, Rarity. Jesus. I didn't mean to make it that angry, she said. Jesus. A bit hurt that Rarity would decide to be so hateful towards Applejack. Twilight scowled at Rarity. You didn't have to be so mean, Rarity. Applejack's your friend. Twilight told the alabaster unicorn. Rarity's heart expression slowly turned into one of sadness. Y you're all right, Twilight. Rarity spoke softly. Thunder quaked around the library, shocking every pony once more. Rarity regained her composure after the booming sound. That's why I'm being so rash. I guess I'm just right. worried about my sister and my parents in this court weather. She merely whispered. Applejack gave a sympathetic look to her friend before speaking. I understand, Rarity. Believe me. I promise I won't interrupt you this time. Rarity smiled back warmly at her friends, whose faces were barely lit by the soft glow being emitted from the fireflies in the lantern. All right, where was I? She began. Well, there was a fashion designer named Faux Pas in Manhattan roughly 40 years ago. He was a gray unicorn with an elegant black mane. They say he was very well known, and all the most regal ponies in Equestria would come to him to have cloth of the finest body made in all of Equestria. Ponies would gather all around his shop in early hours of the morning to have a week dresses, hats, and even some designer socks as they were starting to become the new fashion state in fall. Although, one day, a little purple-coated filly walks into his shop. Rarity explained to her friends, who were now listening to her intently. Rarity shook her hair slightly to get one of her luxurious curls out of her eyes. The child was a member of the Silver family, one of the six royal families, and let's just say, that Paul had a very unhealthy appreciation for little fillies. Rarity spoke. Twilight and Applejack <gasps> gasped as they caught on to what Rarity was implying. Applejack gulped. Do y'all mean he... Yes, darling. He sent every one of his customers away, and he sexually assaulted these innocent filly when no pony was about. The fashionista told them with a lump in her throat. Every pony was silent for a moment. The rain had gone from a hard pour to a mere drizzle. So, what happened after that? Twilight asked, reluctant to hear the rest of the story. Well, naturally, Faux Paul told the filly that she would regret telling her parents if anything happened. The filly ignored him completely and ran home sobbing to her parents. Needless to say... Word of advice. If that ever happens to you if so and someone tells you not to tell your parents, tell your parents. That's... Don't keep it a secret. Tell your parents. Because that ruins you. That ruins you. Firmly, I don't know why the creator even thought of that. Whatever. The Silver family was very powerful, so they decided to do what they do best. They used their power to their advantage to hire two stallions to pay Faux Pas a visit. They forced him inside a barrel, covered the seam of the lid with concrete, and threw it into the eastern equestrian sea. Twilight and Applejack looked at Rarity in shock. I thought he got his at the end. <laughs> But you said this was a ghost story. Applejack spoke. Rarity smiled. I'm not done. Several weeks later, no one had heard from the Silver family for quite a while. They finally investigated the mansion and found all of the Silver family dead. And that same little filly was gone without a trace. 
cause of death for all of her family? The white unicorn explained before she closed her eyes. Drowning, she finished. All three girls sat in the library room, quiet. The howling of the wind could be heard through the thick walls of the tree-turned-library that they were gathered inside. Drowning? I thought you said they found them dead in their home. Twilight questioned with a curious look plastered on her face. Exactly, Rarity answered. Applejack got a shiver down her spine, causing her to shake. <laughs> Dang nabbit, Rarity! Applejack exclaimed. All three girls got <laughs> <walked> to <laughs> together. <laughs> Wow, Rarity, that really was a creepy story. Where did you just make that up? Twilight asked her friend, thoroughly impressed with her eerie tale. Yes, I did! Rarity announced happily. Pretty clever, don't you agree? I even made this on the family name off the top of my head! Applejack's eyes narrowed, and she of curled course. her lips into a smile. I reckon I got one that will top yours. The element of honesty spoke with a hint of smugness. Rarity rolled her eyes. Let's hear it, Applejack. Twilight exclaimed happily, as she was enjoying the slumber party even more than earlier when the power was on. Applejack cleared her throat and adjusted her Stetson over her eyes with a hoof. Have y'all ever been in love? She asked her friends. Not expecting that question, both unicorns looked at each other curiously, wondering where Applejack was going with this. Well, let's just say some ponies would go very far to return the affection of another. They'd even kill to be with them. Applejack spoke bluntly. Let's just say about 20 years ago, there was this feller who lived up in Appaloosa. This was even before Brayburn's time there. This pony went by the name of Mulberry Maine, on the account that he was running the Morris plant business with his wife. Them are the trees that the mulberries grow on. He also had a berry red coat on him that almost perfectly matched the mulberries he was selling. Anyways, one day, he was taking a stroll down Appaloosa's local cemetery on his way to the market, and he comes across this mare. Applejack set the story for her friends. Rarity crossed her hooves and listened in the near dark while Twilight did the same, occasionally adjusting the knob on the side of the lantern for more light. He saw this mare, and by golly, poor old Mulberry's heart must have stopped. She was absolutely gorgeous. She had this soft white coat that was almost as soft as silk and her mane could have masked the color of the spring cherries fresh out of the most beautiful orchard you had ever laid your eyes on. So, naturally stunned by how attractive this mare was, old Mulberry dropped his entire basket of berries he was planning on selling at the market that afternoon on the ground, and they just went everywhere. He must have cursed something fierce when he dropped them, which was just what got the attention of the pretty mare he had his eyes on. She walked over from the tombstone she was staring down at to help Mulberry pick up his fresh garden fruit. Right away, he apologized about him being so loud, and she told him to think nothing of it. They hit it off right there, talking and laughing and joking up a storm. It got a few minutes later than he had expected it to. That family member died probably, I don't know. Yeah, the tombstone. But yeah, just like I said, family member dead, boy boy and friend, husband, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Continue. And he asked her name as he got up and planned to leave. The cow pony continued to regale her friends with the haunting tale. She said her name was Ruby Willow. <laughs> right before she planted a kiss on his lips. The cow pony spoke with a chuckle. Her friend smiled nervously, as if they didn't expect it was coming right. in the story. They went at it right then and there. He kissed her back with all that passion one would expect from a true Appaloosan. And they continued to get all hot and bothered until they eventually ended up having sex right there in the cemetery for the whole morning. Rarity winced. <laughs> they made love in a cemetery? Really? So horrid. Rarity spoke. Applejack returned with a deadpan look. I didn't interrupt you, did I? Rarity looked back at Applejack sheepishly. No, darling, you're absolutely right. Continue. She spoke to assure her. Right. Okay, that caught me off guard. That caught me off guard. What the fuck? Uh, okay. Uh... Only thing I could do is some nights. Oh, okay. 
the fucking head. Fucking phone alarm. God damn it. What? Oh, this one. Yeah, I know. I uh set I can only set it for six. My bad. I'm in the middle of a reaction. You wanna lay up? Alright. Alright, here we go. Oh, great. Now my phone doesn't even want to work. They make love in a cemetery? So horrid! Rarity spoke. Applejack returned with a deadpan really? look. I didn't interrupt you. At the part I, I went back to, it was that part, really? I'm, I'm literally about to shoot myself right now because it, it, it caught me off guard. What do you want me to do? Is it viewer discretion advised? I didn't know it was going to be like this. What do you want me to do? You, did I? Rarity looked back at Applejack sheepishly. No, darling, you're absolutely right. Continue. She spoke to assure her. Right. Now, as I was saying, they did it the whole morning, and they finally were too exhausted to continue. Mulberry, at this point, was absolutely falling in love with Ruby, and she cooed him into submission the entire time, playing the I'm much more attractive than your wife card. Mulberry fell for it, of course. Then, as she was laying beside him on the morning dew-covered grass, she leaned into his ear and whispered something that chilled him to the core. Twilight and Rarity waited for her to continue. She wasn't. Well, what is it? Twilight asked Applejack, a tad bit annoyed. Applejack gave a half-smile. She told him that they couldn't be together anymore as long as he had a wife. He had to get rid of her. Permanently. The room was once again quiet, minus the howling of the wind and the now soft pitter-patter of rain against the library. So, sure enough, wanted to oblige his newfound love in any way he could, Mulberry returned home that night and went to sleep with his loving wife, who cared the world for him. She even had the same color coat as old Mulberry, as if she was born to be with him. After about an hour of her sleeping, Mulberry got up, locked the door of their small cottage, and doused it in kerosene. He then dropped a match on the locked door, burning the entire house and his wife into ashes. Applejack slowly moved her steps in downward so it covered her eyes. Mulberry walked back to the cemetery that same night to give the good news to his new lover. Walking by the tombstone she was by earlier that same day, he looked down at the tombstone, and what he saw made his blood run cold. Twilight reluctantly spoke. What did he see? Applejack tilted her head to look up at Twilight dead in the eyes. No emotion on her face whatsoever. He saw what was written on the tombstone. It said, Here lies Ruby Willow, widow and mother of three. You will never be forgotten. She had been dead all along. This time, it was Rarity who had the shivers running up her spine. Twilight quickly followed in her hoofsteps. Wow! What? Uh, I... Uh, that caught me off guard again. Uh, apparently this story's good with surprises. Okay, cool. I like it. I'm starting to like this story. Except for the Rule 34 shit. Anyway, whatever, let's go. That was good. Rarity spoke, her hoofs still trembling. Yeah, Applejack, 
Now that was a creepy story. Twilight told her with a bit of shakiness in her voice. Still, I think I do have one better. Because this really happened. Applejack and Rarity were now full attention on looking at Twilight as she began to speak. I'm pretty sure this was before either of you were born, but your parents probably remember it very well. Do you remember the tale of the mayor who used to run this library around 25 years ago? Applejack and Rarity looked at each other curiously. No, darling. I don't believe we were ever told. We just assumed the mayor who ran the library was like any other. The fashionista told her friend. Yeah, Granny Smith never told me no about the other mayor who used to run the library. Ooh. Applejack spoke. Twilight's eyes widened. You're joking, right? How could you not know? Twilight yelled at her friends. Uh. Rarity shook her head with a frown. What happened, Twilight? She asked. Twilight tried to relax herself, at least enough to calm her breaths before speaking. Before I came to Ponyville... Princess Celestia let me read up on old Ponyville history. It turns out, the old mayor that used to run this library did something very horrible. She got arrested and locked away for life in the Canelot dungeon for it. Rarity and Applejack looked appalled. What? This happened right here in Ponyville and I didn't even know about it? What did she do? Asked the cow pony. The lights seemed to get dimmer. Oh, it's pretty bad. The reports say her name was Starshine. She was a very beautiful, mist-colored mare, and admired by the whole town from what I hear. She ran this library for a long time with her husband, until her husband left her and her colt for another mare. After that, she... Twilight trailed off. She what, Twilight? Rarity asked, concerned. Twilight looked over at Rarity sadly. I don't know if I should say. You know no pony should speak ill of the dead. The lavender mare told her friends. The two mares moved closer to Twilight. That way, they were sitting pretty close to their friend who was slowly calming down while trying to stop herself from shaking. Maybe this ghost story thing was a bad idea. Poor Lavender Mare spoke quietly. It's not speaking ill of the dead if you're just telling us what happened, Sugar Cube. Applejack spoke to Twilight as she pat her back with a hoof. Applejack's right, dear. I would like to know what happened as well. Rarity spoke comfortingly to her friend. Twilight took a deep breath, which seemed to be in sync perfectly with the crack of thunder outside the library. All right, the purple mare began. After her husband left her, she became very distraught. So distraught that she decided to take it out on her son, Dayshine. He was only five years old, but Sora didn't care. She began taking his food away, making him hungry. She also began beating him day and night, telling him that he was the reason that his father left him, and that they would never be happy again. Time went on, and after a year of straight beatings and isolation from the rest of the town, Dayshine became more pent up than ever. He tried to fight her back one day, which made her furious. Star grabbed one of the ink clothes, and... and... She found herself at a loss for words as she stared at the ground, the tiny lantern barely illuminating part of the floorboards. She gorged out both of the poor colt's eyes and let him bleed to death right there on the library floor. Twilight spoke at nearly the volume of a whisper. The ferocity of the storm had died down, and all that could be heard now was the faint rumble of thunder. There didn't even seem to be any wind, strangely enough. Twilight poked at the lantern's handle with her hoof before continuing. She tried to leave Ponyville and run away, but was caught by the Royal Guard at the Ponyville train station. They kept her locked in a castle dungeon for a very long time, until one day they came to give her her daily meal she was due found her body laying lifelessly on the floor. She had bled to death after having her eyes forcibly removed. What's even stranger, by the words that were on the wall, the killer had taken Starshine's blood and wrote on her cell wall three simple words. Twilight sat quietly for a moment. Her friends said nothing, although they seemed to be trembling. Twilight lifted her head from viewing the lantern to get a better look at them. Twilight jumped at her friends' expressions. They sat there looking at her, shaking violently with looks of horror on their faces, looking at her. No, not at her. Their eyes were wide and their mouths gave in terror. They began to slowly move away from Twilight as she realized that they were looking behind her. Twilight herself began to shake violently, sweat forming on her forehead and dripping down her fur to her face. She dared not turn around. Twilight! Twilight! Applejack tried to say Twilight's name as she and Rarity slowly moved away from where Twilight had been sitting. Rarity couldn't speak. She was completely in shock. 
three words that were written on the wall were... Terrified Mir spoke shakily, slowly looking towards the glass on the lantern. Her heart stopped when she saw her reflection. Behind her, she could see the face of a young colt, her completely pale, and two large black holes where his eyes were supposed to be. Twilight's blood ran cold as she felt a chilling breath touch her neck, uttering three words she could not repeat. Don't be afraid. What the fuck? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna watch the enemy! Okay. I can honestly say I love this story. <laughs> okay, that was, that was good. That was good. I like that. That was good. Props to the producer, or the per person who ripped it. Ran that with his chain reaction. Nice job. That story was good for surprises, and the ending scared the living shit out of me. Whew. Now that be something I say. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah, that be something I say. Fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> Holy shit! That was actually pretty damn... Pretty damn cool. I like that. Two thumbs up! Two thumbs up! Alright, well, anyway. Anyway. This is the end of the video. See you guys later.